Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and this week we're going to take you out for some more wintertime adventures here in Michigan. We're going to start out in the northeast corner of the mitten where Jordan takes us out for one of my favorite wintertime activities and that's ice fishing for walleyes on the famous Hubbard Lake. Jimmy's also got some exciting stuff for us this week too. Well that's right Jenny we do have a few more things on this week's show and we're going to get to do something that we don't do every year but we probably should and that is smelt fishing through the ice and we're going to be on a body of water that I didn't even know had smelt. We'll have that for you. We're also going to have a good pheasant recipe. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan Out of Doors Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's the love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 26th through March 1st at Novi Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi February 26th through March 1st. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53 just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and we kick off this week's show in northern Michigan, where I was able to spend some time walleye fishing through the ice on Hubbard Lake. We're on uh, Hubbard Lake today, chasing some walleye. We, uh, we're off the deep water. We're off the drop off in the deep water, set up in around 50 to 60 feet of water, and a lot of walleyes, good eaters, ranging in 15 to probably 21 inch range. And we have been getting into some giant perch, um, up to 16 inches, and they get up to over two pounds. So we're hoping to get in a couple of those today too. Hubbard Lake can often be overlooked as a quality fishing lake because, well let's face it, it's pretty hard to get to, but this northern Michigan gem is home to some great fishing. Today we're fishing Hubbard Lake, it's in northern Elkona County. It's seven miles long, roughly three miles wide, about 9,000 acres. It's a really deep lake, its average depth is probably around 40 feet, it has a really sharp break all the way around the lake. Goes, there's a drop off that goes about 15 foot down to about 40 all the way around the lake. So they got three big basins. You have East Bay, you have North Bay, and you have the South End. And people fish all over the lake. And there's incredible fishing for walleyes in many different locations. First one, it's always the best one. Today the plan was to fish exclusively with tip-ups, a technique Steve has found to be the most efficient way to fish this large body of water. Today's technique is primarily tip-ups. Jigging works, some people swear by it out here. I found out that I had better luck on tip-ups. Um, we're fishing 50 to 6 feet of water. We're using emerald shiners. There's no gray shiners anywhere in the state of Michigan that I'm aware of. so. Emerald chinos work good. Everybody calls them the walleye minnows. 
Uh, we usually put them roughly three to four feet off bottom and we're using a little treble hook and sometimes I run a little bead on them too. But if you try and run tip ups at the same time you're jigging, you gotta set the jigging rod down, run out to the tip up, mess with the tip up, maybe you'll catch a fish, maybe not. By the time you get back, it's been 10, 15 minutes and you're not jigging that whole time. So we found out that tip up fishing is your most productive method and we bring out a warming shack, I call it. It's got, it's basically a deer blind. It's got four sides with windows on each side and you just sit inside and wait for the flags to fly. Um, that way you can put flags. We got some out probably 200 yards out to the side just trying to locate the fish. Having a shack that you can take around to wherever the fish are at, it's permanently mounted on skis so you can take it to wherever you're fishing and you can stay warm. Kids can come, it's great for families, great for big parties. Anybody that's cold can go warm up, other people can still continue to fish. Works out very well. Steve had told me they were catching some very nice perch mixed in with the walleye and he wasn't exaggerating. This perch was actually on the smaller side of some of the ones they had been catching and was still a very nice perch. 13-ish, 13 and a half-ish around there. Pretty good one. It's not so much the length of it is the bellies on them. You yeah. can see that she's spitting out eggs so I mean, they're just huge females. Their egg sacs are just ginormous inside. It makes their bellies puff up. That's where they get that huge weight. Well, the morning came and went with lots of flags, but only a couple of fish. We were constantly checking tip-ups, but very rarely was there a fish still on. It was a light bite to be sure, but after a little lull in the early afternoon, the action began to heat up again. Today's right after a nice warm spell. We got a nice little cold snap last night. The barometer was falling, falling, falling all night. Let's keep an eye on it. And today it was rising. It rose all morning, which the fish were biting, but they're biting real light. They're taking it out about 10 feet and dropping it, which is typical after a cold snap. As the afternoon went on, the bite remained just steady enough to keep us busy. If we weren't dealing with a fish, the brutal weather conditions had us constantly checking tip-ups and reopening holes. This style of fishing requires constant work, especially on cold days. Today with the wind, you got drifting snow, and it's pretty tough when they're light biting like this. You gotta constantly go around, check your lines. If you're not getting no action, you get out there and check them, make sure they didn't kill the minnow, make sure the minnows are still lively, clean the holes out, Make sure the tip-up's ready to go off. So there's a lot of maintenance on the colder days. And that's what's happening today. We're finding out that a lot of fish coming up and just grabbing it, killing the minnow. And some of them just take it out a short ways and drop it. So when they're light biting, it's pretty tough. Normally, they have it swallowed by the time you go out there. Very rarely see a dropped bait. So if they take, they usually have it. Today's kind of unusual. At least they're biting. Here's those freshwater shrimp. This is the freshwater shrimp. You look in the hole. One unique thing about this fishery is the abundance of these so called freshwater shrimp. Steve bases a lot of his fishing strategy around these shrimp, and it was evident that they are indeed a large part of the diet of the walleye here on Hubbard Lake. In general, I do believe the fish are out here on this flat because of that freshwater shrimp. I believe that's their main forage in the winter. I've never found anything else in their stomachs other than the freshwater shrimp. And I do believe they're in these big basins down in the deep 
40 to 60 feet of water feeding on those freshwater shrimp. In the past, these fish usually hang out in their normal locations on, you know, sometimes they hang out on the structure. I find them, most of them have been out in the big flats. Later in the winter, they do naturally spawn in this lake. They do not stock this lake. These are all natural reproduction fish. They tend to congregate towards the river mouths in late ice. So we'll find them down in the southern end of the lake near March 15th. Well, we ended the day with six keeper walleye and one really nice perch. Of course, this had been one of the slower days Steve had had all year, but that's often the case when the cameras are rolling. Special thanks to Steve for having me out on the hard water for a good day of fishing here in northern Michigan. Well, in this next story, we are going to be featuring a sportsman that is going above and beyond to help keep the lake that he likes to fish on clean. It's a practice that we're hoping that many of you would want to take part in as well. Last week found me between Kalamazoo and Battle Creek, doing something that normally only happens in northern Michigan, that is getting ready to do some smelt fishing. Well, Phil, what do we got going on here today? Uh, let's try for some smelt. Yeah, right where, where are we? Well, uh, what's commonly known as Second Bay on Gull Lake, uh, near Kalamazoo. Okay. And, uh, bites have been up and down for me, but uh, <clears throat> guys have been getting them, and uh, we're going to see what we can do tonight. And tell me a little bit about this rig, if someone's not familiar with a uh, smelt it's, rig. And this is a, yeah, it's a smelt rig. Uh, on recognized smelt waters, you're allowed to use unlimited number of hooks on one pole. Okay. I have uh, nine number 16 and number 14 fly hooks, and then a little Sitka smelt stick. You can use a lot of guys use Haley jigs, and uh, it's a glow jig. Uh, just uh, tie these hooks in line, about six inches apart, uh, and uh, that's uh, I'm using three pound test. With smelt, you don't. I don't think the line weight really matters too much. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, and the long yeah. rod. Yeah, uh, a long rod. I feel it hooks uh, helps me with hookups. Okay. Uh, a lot better with hookups and uh, just a little more action. Uh, not a big fan of short rods. Okay. And what is a good night or a bad night as far as numbers of smelt? <sighs> Depends on who you talk to. <laughs> for, for, uh, for me, a good night. Uh, I'd say anything over fifty. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd say anything over 50 is a good night. Uh, really, every night's a good night just getting out here. Getting on the ice is always fun, especially when it's almost like a small village out here. Tons of guys, shacks, and lanterns were making their way onto the ice for these delicious and sought-after smelt. The spot we were fishing was open water just two weeks prior, but we had about five or six inches of ice, and we were in about 60 feet of water. The best bite is right after dark, so Phil, his brother John, and John's grandson Wyatt, well, we were ready for the fish. Got one going? Yep, got one going. See if we can get him up through the hole. Ain't even dark yet. Just change jigs. There's gold lake smelt. There he is. Okay, the first of many. Now one of the reasons I wanted to fish with Phil was a small program he got started here on Gull Lake that has done a lot in keeping the ice clean for everybody. Just got tired of seeing trash out here. Uh, a lot of guys out here like me, you see something, pick it up, take it home with you. And uh, on an ice fishing forum, you know, a lot of people are complaining about all the trash on the ice and all the slobs. And kind of got tired about reading posts like that. Uh, instead of posting stuff, why not try to do something? I just came up with a crazy idea. Started on the north end three years ago. I took the garbage cans that were up there and I just made a little sign and put it down by where guys walk on. And uh, it worked. Hmm. And so last year I started doing it down here at South Bay and also here at Second Bay. Uh, the business owners uh, allowed me to put the garbage cans out and uh, just put a sign on them. You know, uh, please dump your trash here, take it home with you, don't leave it on the ice. So, pretty simple and it works and uh, 
I'm hoping that other guys can do it on their local lakes to keep the lakes clean. Uh, it just just something that's simple, simple to do. Ooh. Way to go. Bottom hook. Big smell. That's a good smell right there. Big one. Nice. Wyatt's first smelt. Nice job, Wyatt. Thank you. Okay, let's get down there and get you another one. I don't know when he's getting close. Okay. Only one pound. Wait for that hole. Another big one. Yeah, another nice one. Another gull like smell. Scraping by the head. About 10 feet to go. As soon as that swivel comes up, pull him up out of the hole, okay? Yeah, pull him up out of the hole. Get him away from the hole. Ooh, another nice one. Yep. Wow, that's a nice one. Hey, pull him up. Good job. Excellent. Smaller one. We'll take him. Yep. Well, for smelt fishing, the night was fairly slow. Phil says it's a good night that he and a buddy will put about 50 or so fish on the ice. Tonight, we are going to do about half of that, but landing 20 or so is still not a waste of time. It's great to be out, and with the glow of the lantern, it's hard to beat time on the ice with friends. Yeah. The flashlight did help. Down there, see if we can't do it again. Good job. Thank you. Now, being on the ice in a warm ice shack has its advantages, but huddling around a lantern with buddies while sitting on a bucket, well, it also has its merits. However, you choose to do it, make sure that you take some time to get on the ice this winter. Whether you use LCD lights under the ice to attract a fish, or you just spud a hole and hope for the best, part of the fun is getting out here and just experiencing a Michigan night on the ice. Got uh, Anthony and Phil Peters here again, making a quick recipe of pheasant and orzo soup for you. Nice and simple, but very flavorful soup. All right, we have six pheasants and half a chicken. We use the chicken just so you got that fat, adds a little flavor to it. We have some beef base or beef broth, parsley, chicken bouillon, about uh, six cups of mushrooms, a pound of orzo about four cups of celery and four cups of carrots. All right, so we got the stock here, which we cooked the birds in whole. We had one whole onion and two cloves of garlic in there that I took out, and we're gonna blend and add in later. I'll show you guys that when we get to it. The stock is made with six to eight quarts of water. The guys leave it simmering while they remove all the bones and cartilage from the meat and tear it into small pieces. All right, our birds are done now, so next step is to soften up our vegetables. We're going to have Phil take these and saute them off in the pan. And then I'll show you what I was talking about with the onions when he's doing that. All right, so when we boiled the birds whole in the water, I had one whole onion in there and about two cloves of garlic. So what I do is I let them cook with the water and then I soften them up like so. And then I blend it and add it to my soup for flavor. So first, I'm going to add my onion and garlic puree. Phil, go ahead and add the vegetables. I'm gonna take my mushrooms. All 
All right, so if you're at camp or something like that, you can do this in a crock pot. You can do it in a cast iron in a pot over an open flame, anything. And you can typically add anything to this soup. It, you can be creative. I got two chicken bouillon in right now. I'm gonna add those to it. Let that melt. I got my parsley for some color. Throw that in there. Stir that around real good. And this is a little beef broth. You can use bouillon if you got it. Just throw that in there for some flavor and some color. Which is our chicken and pheasant. I don't want to burn myself, so I'm putting it in slow. Once all the meat and vegetables are in, Anthony brings the soup to a rolling boil and lets it cook for about an hour. Then it's ready for the final step. We've had it cooking for about an hour now. We're gonna add orzo, which is a, uh, it's a cross between a rice and a noodle. So it looks like rice, but it, it tastes like a noodle. It's got that texture. So we're gonna just throw that in right now. If you don't have orzo, you can use rice, barley, pasta. Oh, you can use any, you can use little noodles, use those star noodles. So now we're just gonna give it a nice stir. Good. Let those, those noodles will take 10 minutes to cook. So we'll let them cook and then we'll try it. So we're gonna take a nice heaping scoop, get everything, all the meat, the orzo, some broth. Good. Nice and hot. Mm, looks good. Ooh, yeah. You can you try it out? Yep. I'm gonna put a little Parmesan on mine. You put whatever you want. Make a little hot sauce. You can do, do whatever you like. Let's try it out. Mm. That's good. Oh, nice and tender. Mmm. Mmm. Open that everything, get a little mushroom in there. Mmm. This is good. We'll go. Thanks to Anthony and Phil for bringing us another awesome wild game recipe. You can find this and all of our recipes on our website at michigandoutofdoorstv.com. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around over the next few weeks. We've got a lot of stuff we've been working on that you won't want to miss. I'll be heading to Devil's Lake in the southern part of the state for some ice fishing and then to Mark Martin's vacation ice fishing school that's happening on Lake Misaki, one of his locations that he's doing this year. Jimmy and Jordan have all sorts of fun stuff coming up too. Gabe's been working on some more exciting things. You can check out where we're at and what we're up to on our Facebook page or on our website. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to get a hold of us here at Michigan Out of Doors, and we're going to be running a competition on our Facebook page over the next few weeks here at Michigan Out of Doors Television. And what that's going to be is really an ice shanty competition. Well, what is that all about? Well, what we're hoping that you do is take pictures of your ice shack, no matter where you are in the state of Michigan, post them on our Facebook page. And what we're going to do is pick the most unique three ice shanties that you send us pictures from and then we'll pick from that and then let you the viewer pick the top ice shanty the most unique ice shanty here in the state of Michigan. We're going to have a nice prize package you can learn more about that on our Facebook page and one of the prizes though and I think one of the coolest ones is we're going to come to you do a story with you from your unique ice shack here in the state of Michigan. So make sure you do that. It should be a lot of fun over the next few weeks. Check out our Facebook page for more information. Now also coming over the next few weeks, one of the things that's happening that you need to sign up for yet here in the next couple of days because it takes part, really takes place in the entire month of February. Our friends at Frank's are running a new ice fishing tournament that's going to run the entire month of February. They have all sorts of great prizes. You can learn more about that at franksgreatoutdoors.com. Uh, if you want to be part of that ice tournament, it's, this is the first year for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, the one of the first weekends in February, I'm going to be up in the Traverse City area. The East Bay Sportsman's Fellowship is going to be running their Sportsman's Banquet on the 6th and 7th of February. I believe there still are some tickets available for that two-night event. If you'd like some more information, you can check out the website on the bottom of the screen. And that uh, should be a lot of fun and a chance to interact. And for those of you in Northwest Michigan, we're looking forward to being there as well. So lots happening here in the state of Michigan. And that's not even to mention all the great stuff that's going to be happening here on Michigan Out of Doors over the next few weeks. And as always, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Chappelle, providing sleds, shelters, and accessories for your time on the ice. 
Chappelle offers a line of pop-ups, flip-overs, and the Bay Runner, a mobile cabin with a shelf for electronics and a sliding seat. On the web at Chappelle.com. Buy propane, exceptional energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. Buy Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state. St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine tree. I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hand.